Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Chair, half talking to herself and half asleep. The kitten had been having a grand game of romps with a ball of worsted Alice had been trying to wind up. Oh, you wicked, wicked little thing. Really, Dinah ought to have taught you better manners. Now, don't interrupt me. I'm going to tell you all your faults. Number one, you squeaked twice while Dinah was washing your face this morning. Now, you can't deny it, Kitty. I heard you. Number two, you pulled Snowdrop away by the tail, just as I had put down the saucer of milk before her. Now, for number three, you unwound every bit of the worsted while I wasn't looking. That's three faults, Kitty, and you've not been punished for any of them yet. You know, I'm saving up all your punishments for Wednesday week. Suppose they had saved up all my punishments. What would they do at the end of a year? I should be sent to prison, I suppose, when the day came. Can you play chess? Now, don't smile. I'm asking it seriously. Because when we were playing just now, you watched just as if you understood it. And when I said check, you purred. <laughs> well, it was a nice check, Kitty. And really, I might have won if it hadn't been for that nasty knight that came wriggling down among my pieces. Let's pretend that you're the Red Queen. Do you know, I think that if you sat up and folded your arms, you'd look exactly like her. Look, don't sulk, it's easy. You're not good directly. Kitty, I'll put you through into Looking Glass House. How would you like that? Now, if you'll only attend, Kitty, and not talk so much, I'll tell you all my ideas about Looking Glass House. First, there's the room we can see through the glass. That's just the same as our drawing room. Only the fingers go the other way. We well, only could get through into it somehow. I'm sure it's got such wonderful things in it. Let's pretend the glass has got all soft like gauze so that we can get through. Why, it's turning into a sort of a mist now, I declare. It'll be easy enough to get through. Oh, what fun it would be when they see me through the glass in here and can't get at me. Here's a book. It's all in some language I don't know. Why, it's a looking glass book, of course. And if I hold it up to the glass, the words will go the right way again. Jabberwocky. <laughs> Twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the burrogoves, and the momraths outgrave. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jubjub bird, and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his warple sword in hand, long time the manxome foe he sought. So rested he by the tum-tum tree, and stood a while in thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock with eyes aflame came whiffling through the tulgy wood, and burbled as it came. One, 
two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumping back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O frabjous day, Kaloo, Kalei, he chortled in his joy. T'was brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the burrogoves, and the mome wraths outgrave. It seems very pretty, but it's rather hard to understand. Seems to fill my head with ideas, only I don't know quite what they are. Somebody killed something. That's clear at any rate. Oh, my ears and whiskers. How late it's getting. Oh, dear, dear. I should be too late. It's all very well to say drink me, but I better look first and see whether you're marked poison or not. For if a little girl drinks from a bottle marked poison, it is almost certain to disagree with her sooner or later. Now, oh. must be all right. sort of mixed flavour of cherry tart and custard and pineapple and roast turkey and toffee and hot buttered toast. What a curious feeling. I must be shutting up like a telescope. I am. I wonder if I shall go out altogether. Like a candle. Oh, no. There's no use in crying like that. I advise you to leave off this minute. Hmm. Well, I'll eat it. And if it makes me grow larger, I can reach the key. If it makes me grow smaller, I can creep under the door. So either way, I'll get into the garden. And I don't care which happens. Which way? Which way? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Great girl like you to go on crying in this way. Stop this moment, I tell you. 
Duchess, the Duchess. Oh, dear, won't she be savage if I've kept her waiting? If you please, sir. Everything is today. And yesterday things went on just as usual. I wonder if I've changed in the night. Let me think, was I the same when I woke up this morning? I almost think I can remember feeling a little different. If I'm not the same, the next question is who in the world am I? I'm sure I can't be Mabel, for I know all sorts of things. And she. Oh, she knows such a very little. I'll try if I know all the things I used to know. How doth the little crocodile improve his shining tail and pour the waters of the Nile on every golden scale? How cheerfully he seems to grin, how neatly sprats his claws and welcomes little fishies in with gently smiling jaws. Oh, no. That's all wrong, I'm certain. But I must be Mabel after all. How can that have happened? I've grown small again. Oh! Oh, that was a narrow escape. Now for the garden. Uh, oh, I've forgotten the key again. I never was as small as this before, never. It's too bad. Things are worse than ever now. Ah! <laughs> I hadn't cried so much. I shall be punished for it now, I suppose, by being drowned in my own tears. Would it be of any use now to speak to this mouse? Everything's so out of the way here that I think it quite likely it can talk. At any rate, there's no harm in trying. <laughs> oh, Mouse, do you know the way out of this pool? I'm very tired of swimming about here, oh, Mouse. Alice thought this must be the right way of speaking to a mouse, but she remembered having seen in her brother's Latin grammar... A mouse, of a mouse, to a mouse, a mouse, O oh, mouse. <laughs> Perhaps it doesn't understand English. I dare say it's a French mouse come over with William the Conqueror. Où est ma chat? <laughs> oh, oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, I quite forgot you didn't like cats. Would you like uh, uh, cats if you were me? Oh, no, indeed. And, and don't be angry about it, for I wish I could show you our cat, Dinah. I think you'd take a fancy to cats if you could only see her. Uh. She is such a dear, quiet thing, and mm. she is such a capital one for catching mice. <laughs> Oh, I beg your pardon. We won't talk about her anymore if you'd rather not. We indeed. As if I would talk on such a subject. I... You see, our family always hated cats. Nasty, low, vulgar things. Don't let me hear that name again. I won't indeed. Uh, are you fond of... Dogs? There is such a nice little dog near our house I should like to show you. A little bright-eyed terrier, you know. It belongs to a farmer, you know, and he says it's so useful, it's worth a hundred pounds. He says it kills all the rats and... No. <gasps> oh, dear, I'm afraid I've offended it again. Oh, Mouse, please do come back again. And we won't talk about cats or dogs either, if you don't like them. Well, let us get to shore and... Then I'll tell you my history, and you'll understand why it is I hate it, 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 you know. Come on, come on. Gather round, everyone, and listen to me. I'm going to show you all how to get rough. Ahem, are you all ready? 
This is the driest thing I know. <laughs> Silence all round, if you please. William the Conqueror, whose cause was favoured by the Pope, was soon submitted to by the English, who wanted leaders and had been of late much accustomed to usurpation and conquest. Edwin and Morcar, the heirs of Mercia and Northumbria. Ugh. I beg your pardon? Did you speak? Not I. I thought you did. I proceed. Edwin and Morcar, the earls of Mercia and Northumbria, declared for him. And even Stigand, the patriotic Archbishop of Canterbury, found it advisable... Found what? Found it. Of course you know what it means. I know what it means well enough when I find a thing. It's generally a frog or a worm. The question is, what did the Archbishop find? Found it advisable to go with Edgar Atheling to meet William and offer him the crown. William's conduct at first was moderate, but the insolence of his Normans... Uh, how are you getting on now, my dear? As wet as ever, it doesn't seem to dry me at all. In that case, I move that the meeting adjourn for the immediate adoption of more energetic remedies. Speak English! I don't know the meaning of half those long words, and what's more... I don't believe you do either. What I was going to say was that the best thing to get us dry would be a caucus race. What is a caucus race, Mr. Dodo? Why, the best way to explain it is to do it. First, it marked out a race course in a sort of circle. The exact shape doesn't matter. They began running when they liked and left off when they liked. The dodo suddenly called out... The race is over. The race is won. Everybody has won, and all must have prizes. But who's to give the prizes? Why, she, of course. Oh, 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 prizes, 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 oh, 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 prizes, prizes, prizes. I want the ring. Oh, my turn. Oh, 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 oh. Just a minute, Mr. Dodo. She must have a prize too, you know. Of course. Uh, what else have you got in your pocket? Only a thimble. Oh, hand it over here then. We beg you to accept this elegant thimble. <laughs> Promise to tell me your history and why it is you hate. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Mine is a long and a sad tale. It is a long tale, certainly. But why do you call it sad? Ha. Fury said to a mouse that he met in the house. Let us both go to law. I will prosecute you. Come, I'll take no denial. We must have a trial. For really, this morning, I've nothing to do. Said the mouse to the cur, such a trial, dear sir, with no jury or judge. Would be wasting our breath. I'll be judge, I'll be jury, said cunning old fury. I'll try the whole cause and condemn you to death. You're not a, <clears throat> you're not attending. I beg your pardon, you had got to the fifth bend, I think. I had not. I'm not. Oh, do let me help to undo it. I shall do nothing of the sort. <laughs> what a pity it wouldn't stay. I wish I had our Dinah here. I know I do. She'd soon fetch it back. And who is Dinah, if I might venture to ask the question? Dinah's our cat, and she's such a capital one for catching mice, you can't think. And oh, I wish you could see her after the birds. Why, she'd eat a little bird as soon as look at it. Wow! I really must be getting home. The night air doesn't suit my clothes. I wish I hadn't mentioned Dinah. 
Nobody seems to like her down here. And I'm sure she's the best cat in all the world. Oh, my dear Dinah, I wonder if I shall ever see you anymore. Oh, the Duchess. The Duchess. Won't she be savage? I kept her waiting. Oh, my dear paws. All my furs and whiskers. She'll have me executed. As sure as ferrets are ferrets. Now, where could I have dropped them? Why, Marianne, what are you doing here? Run home and fetch me a pair of gloves and a fan. Quick now. He took me for his housemaid. How surprised he'll be when he finds out who I am. But I better take him his fan and gloves. That is, if I can find them. Who are you? I hardly know who I am, so just a present. I knew who I was yesterday, but I must have changed things then. What do you mean by that? Explain yourself. Well, I, I can't explain myself, I'm afraid, sir, because I'm not myself, you see. I don't see. I, I can't put it more clearly than that, for I can't understand it myself, and being so many different sizes in one day is terribly confusing. It isn't. Well, perhaps you haven't found it so yet. But when you have to turn into a chrysalis... You will someday, you know. And then after that into a butterfly, I should think you'll feel it a little queer, won't you? Not a bit. Well, perhaps your feelings may be different. All I know is it would feel very queer to me. You? Who are you? I think you ought to tell me who you are first. Why? Come back. I have something important to say. Gee? Keep your temper. No. So you think you're changed, do you? I'm afraid I am, sir. I can't remember things as I used. And I don't keep the same size for ten minutes together. Can't remember? What things? Well, I tried to say, how doth the little busy bee? But it all came different. Ah. Mm -hmm. Repeat. You are old, Father William. You are old, Father William, the young man said, and your hair has become very white. <laughs> and yet you incessantly stand on your head. Do you think at your age it is right? In my youth, Father William replied to his son, I feared it would injure the brain. But now that I'm perfectly sure I have none, why I do it again and again. You are old, said the youth, and your jaws are too weak for anything tougher than suet. Yet you'd finish the goose with the bones and the beak. Pray, how did you manage to do it? In my youth, said his father, I took to the law and argued each case with my wife. And the muscular strength which it gave to my jaw has lasted the rest of my life. <laughs> That's not said right. Not quite right, I'm afraid, sir. Some oh, of the words have got altered. It's wrong from beginning to end. What size do you want to be? Well, I'm not particular as to size, sir. Only one doesn't like changing so often, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, are you content now? Well, I should like to be a little larger, sir, if you wouldn't mind. Three inches is such a wretched height to be. It is a very good height indeed. Uh, but I'm not used to it. You get used to it in time. One side will make you grow taller. The other side will make you grow shorter. One side of what? The other side of what? Of the mushroom. But which is which? <laughs> An invitation from the Queen to play croquet. From the Queen, an invitation for the Duchess to play croquet. No, sir. 
sort of use in knocking, and that's for two reasons. First, because I'm on the same side of the door as you are. Secondly, because they're making such a noise inside, no one could possibly hear you. At least then, how am I to get in? There might be some sense in your knocking if we had the door between us. For instance, if you were inside, you might knock, and I could let you out. How am I? I shall sit here till tomorrow, or next day, maybe. But how am I to get in? Are you to get in at all? That is the first question, you know. It's really dreadful the way these creatures argue. It's enough to drive one crazy. Uh, I shall sit here on and off for days and days. But what am I to do? Anything you like. There's no use in talking to him. He's perfectly idiotic. <laughs> Cat. That's why pig. Well, I didn't know the Cheshire cats always grinned. In fact, I didn't know the cats could grin. They all can, and most of them do. Well, I don't know of any that do. You don't know much, and that's a fact. <laughs> Everybody minded their own business, the world would go a deal faster than it does. This would not be an advantage. Just think of all the work it would make with the day and the night. You see, the Earth takes 24 hours to turn round on its axis. Talking of axes, chop off her head. <laughs> 24 hours, I think, or is it 12? Oh, don't bother me. I never could abide figures. <laughs> to your little boy and beat him when he sneezes he only does it to annoy because he knows it teases <laughs> I beat him when he sneezes, for he can thoroughly enjoy the pepper when he sneezes. Here, you may nurse him a bit if you like. I must go and get ready to play croquet with the queen. <laughs> So long as I get somewhere. Be sure to do so if you only walk long enough. What sort of people live about here? <laughs> to the right lives a hatter, to the left lives a march here. Visit either you like, they're both mad. I don't want to go among mad people. You can't help it. We are all mad. I am mad. <laughs> you are mad. 
How do you know I'm mad? You must be, or you would not have come here. Do you play croquet with the queen today? Oh, I should like to very much, but I haven't been invited yet. <laughs> You'll see me there. By the by, what became of the baby? I'd nearly forgotten to ask. It turned into a pig. I thought it would. <laughs> Did you say pig or fig? I said pig. <sighs> I wish you wouldn't keep appearing and vanishing so suddenly. You make one quite giddy. Oh. Well, I've often seen a cat without a grin, but a grin without a cat? It's the most curious thing I've seen in all my life. I've seen hatters before. The March Hare will be much the more interesting, and as it's May, perhaps it won't be raving mad. At least, not as mad as it was in March. No room. Must be very uncomfortable for the Dormouse. Only as it's asleep, I suppose it doesn't mind. No room, no room! There's plenty of room. Have some wine. I don't see any wine. There isn't any. Then it wasn't very civil of you to offer it. It wasn't very civil of you to sit down without being invited. Oh, I didn't know it was your table. It's late for a great many more than three. Your hair wants cutting. <laughs> you should learn not to make personal remarks. It's very rude. Why is a raven like a writing desk? Come, we should have some fun now. Oh, I'm oh. glad you've begun asking riddles. I believe I can guess that. Do you mean you think you can find out the answer to it? Exactly so. Then you should say what you mean. I do. At least, at least I mean what I say. It's the same thing, you know. Not the same thing a bit. Why, you might just as well say that I see what I eat is the same thing as I eat what I see. <laughs> you might just as well say that I like what I get is the same thing as I get what I like. Or you might just as well say that I breathe when I sleep is the same thing as I sleep when I breathe. It is the same thing with you, Dormouse. <laughs> what day of the month is it? The fourth. Two days wrong. I told you butter wouldn't shoot the works. It was the best butter. Yes, but some crumbs must have got in as well. You shouldn't have put it in with the bread knife. It was the best butter, you know. What a funny watch. It tells the days of the month, but doesn't tell what o'clock it is. Why should it? Does your watch tell you what year it is? No, of course not, but that's because it stays the same year for such a long time together. Which is just the case with mine. I don't understand you. The Dormouse is asleep again. <laughs> just what I was going to remark myself. Have you guessed the riddle yet? No, I give it up. What's the answer? I haven't the slightest idea. All right. I think you might do something better with the time than wasting it and asking riddles that have no answers. If you knew time as well as I do, you wouldn't talk about wasting it. It's him! What? I don't know what you mean. Of course you don't. I dare say you never even spoke to time. No, perhaps not, but I know that I have to beat time when I learn music. Ah, that accounts for it. He won't stand beating. Now, if you only stayed on good terms with him, he'd do almost anything you'd like with the clock. For instance, suppose it were nine o'clock in the morning, just time to begin lessons. You only have to whisper a hint to time, and round goes the clock in a twinkling, half past one, time for dinner. Oh, I wish it was. That would be grand, certainly. But then I shouldn't be hungry for it, you know. Not at first, perhaps, but you could keep it to half past one as long as you like. Is that the way you manage? Not I. We quarreled last March, just before he went mad, you know. Oh, it was at the great concert given by the Queen of Hearts. And I had to sing, twinkle, twinkle, little bat, how I wonder what you're at. You know the song, perhaps. Yeah. I've heard something like it. It goes on, you know, in this way. Up above the world you fly like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle. 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 Well, I'd hardly finished the first verse. Twinkle. I'd hardly finished the first verse. Twinkle, twinkle. I'd hardly finished the first verse when the queen bawled out he's murdering time off with his head. Oh, how dreadfully savage. And ever since that, he won't do a thing I ask. It's always six o'clock now. 
Is that the reason so many tea things are put here? Yes, that's it. It's always tea time. Ah! And we've not time to wash the things between whiles. <laughs> then you keep moving around, I suppose. Exactly so, as the things get used up. But when you come to the beginning again... Suppose we change the subject. I'm getting tired of this. I vote the young lady tell us a story. I'm afraid that I don't know one. Then, then the, the Dormouse show. Wake, Wake up, Dormouse! I wasn't asleep. I heard every word you fellows were saying. Tell us a story. Yes, please do. And be quick about it or you'll be asleep before it's done. Once upon a time, there were three little sisters and their names were Elsie, Lacey and Tilly and they lived at the bottom of a well. What did they live on? They lived on Treacle. Oh, they couldn't have done that, you know. They'd have been ill. So they were very ill. But why did they live at the bottom of a well? Take some more tea. Well, I've had nothing yet, so I can't take more. You mean you can't take less? It's very easy to take more than nothing. Nobody asked your opinion. Ooh, who's making personal remarks now? But why did they live at the bottom of a well? It was a treacle well. There's no such thing. If you can't be civil, you better finish the story for yourself. No, please go on. I won't interrupt you again. I dare say there may be one. One indeed. And so these three little sisters, they were learning to draw, you know. What did they draw? Treacle. I want to clean cup. Let's all move one place on. But I don't understand. What did they draw the treacle from? You can draw water out of a water well, so I should think you could draw treacle out of a treacle well. Eh, stupid? But they were in the well. Of course they were well in. They were learning to draw and they drew all manner of things. Everything that begins with an M. Why with an M? Why not? <laughs> That begins with an M. Such as mousetraps and the moon and memory and muchness. You know, you say things are much of a muchness. Did you ever see such a thing as a drawing of a muchness? Really, now you ask me, I don't think... Then you shouldn't talk. No room. No room. No room. At any rate, I'll never go there again. That's the stupidest tea party I ever was at in all my life. Look out, I Don't go splashing paint over me like that. I couldn't help it. Seven, jog my elbow. Yeah, that's right, five. Always lay the blame on others. You'd better not talk. I heard the Queen say only yesterday you deserve to be beheaded. <laughs> what for? That's none of your business, too. Yes, it is his business, and I'll tell him it was for giving the cook tulip roots instead of onions. <laughs> well, of all the unjust things. Would you tell me, please, why are you painting those roses? Well, why, the fact is, you see, miss... This here ought to have been a red rose tree, and, and we put in a white one by mistake. And if the queen was to find it out, we'd all, we'd all have our heads cut off, you know. The queen. The queen! Is this? Idiot! What's your name? My name is Alice, so please, Your Majesty. Oh, they're only a pack of cards, after all. I needn't be afraid of them. Who are they? Um... How should I know? It's no business of mine. Off with her head! Oh, Nonsense! I consider, my dear, she's only a child. Turn them over! Get up! Oh, leave off that. You're making me giddy. Now, what have you been doing here? <laughs> May it please your majesty. We were trying to... Oh, <gasps> I see. Off with their heads. Can you play croquet? Yes. Come on, then. Yeah. 
It's a fine day. Very. Where's the Duchess? Shh, shh. She's under sentence of execution. What for? Did you say, what a pity? No, I didn't. I don't think it's at all a pity. I said, what for? She... She boxed the Queen's ears. <laughs> Hush. Hush. The Queen will hear you. She came rather late, and the Queen said... Get to your places! How glad I am to see you again, you dear old thing. You've been thinking. That's why you you can't talk. I can't think of the, what the moral of that is right now, but I shall think of it in a moment. Perhaps he has one. Tut tut, child. Everything has a moral if you can find it. Oh, the game's saying nothing. Listen, I'll let you So it is. And the moral of that is, oh, it is love, it is love that makes the world go round. Somebody said that it's done by everybody minding their own business. Oh, well, it means much the same thing. And the moral of that is, take care of the synths, and the sounds will take care of themselves. How fond she is of finding morals in things. I dare say you're wondering why I don't put my arm around you. The reason is, I'm rather in doubt about the, the temper of your uh, flamingo. Shall I try the experiment? It might bite. Very true. Flamingos and mustard both bite. And the moral of that is, birds of a feather flock together. Mustard <laughs> isn't a bird. Right again. What a clear way you have of putting things. It's a mineral, I think. Of course it is. There's a large mustard mine near here. And the moral of that is, the more there is of mine, the less there is of yours. Oh, I know. It's a vegetable. It doesn't look like one, but it is. I quite agree with you. And the moral of that is, be what you would seem to be. Or, if you'd like it put more simply, never imagine yourself to be otherwise than what it might appear to those that uh, you might have been or what you might have been was not otherwise than what you, you might have been or which would appear to them to be uh, uh, otherwise. I think I should understand that better if I had it written down. But I can't quite follow it as you say it. That's nothing to what I could say if I tried. Pray don't trouble yourself to say it any longer than that. Oh, don't talk about trouble. I make you a present of everything I've said as yet. Now, the moral of that is... Psst, the moral of that... A nice day, Your Majesty. <sighs> now, I give you fair warning. Either you or your head must be off. And that in about half no time. Take your choice. <sighs> Have you met the mock turtle yet? I don't even know what a mock turtle is. Well, it's the thing mock turtle soup is made from. I never saw one nor heard of one. <laughs> you shall meet the mock turtle and hear his history. Griffin. Uh -huh. Griffin. Up, uh -huh. lazy thing. Take this young lady to meet the Mock Turtle and to hear his history. I shall take care of some executions I have ordered. Ha <laughs> ha! What fun! <laughs> What's the fun? Why, she! It's all her fancy, that. They never execute nobody, you know. Come on. I never was so ordered about in all my life. Never. <laughs> what is his sorrow? That's all his fancy, that. He hasn't got no sorrow. <laughs> this here child, she wants for to know your history, she do. Uh, I'll tell it to her. Sit down, both of you. And don't speak a word till I'm finished. Once, uh, I was a real turtle. When we were little, we went to school in the sea. 
The master was an old turtle. We used to call him Tortoise. Why did you call him Tortoise if he wasn't one? We called him Tortoise because he taught us. <laughs> oh, really, you are very dull. You ought to be ashamed of yourself for asking such a simple question. <laughs> Drive on, old fella, and don't be all day about it. Yes, we went to school in the sea, though you mayn't believe it. I never said I didn't. You did. On your thumb! You know, we had the best of education. In fact, we went to school every day. Oh, I've been to day school, too. You needn't be so proud as all that. With extras? Yes, we learned French and music. And washing? Certainly not. Oh, then, then yours wasn't really a good school, then. <laughs> Why, at ours, they had, at the end of the bill, French music and washing extra. <laughs> <laughs> well, you couldn't have wanted it much living at the bottom of the sea. Well, I couldn't afford to learn it. I only took the regular course. What was that? Reeling and writhing, of course, to begin with. And then the different branches of arithmetic. Ambition, distraction, uglification, and derision. Well, I never heard of uglification. What is it? Never heard of uglification? <laughs> you know what to beautify is, I suppose? It means to make anything prettier. Well, then, if you don't know what to uglify is, you are a simpleton. And how many hours a day did you do lessons? Oh, ten hours the first day, nine the next, eight, and so on. What a curious plan. That's the reason they call lessons, because they lessen from day to day. Then the 11th day must have been a holiday. Of course it was. But how did you manage on the 12th? <laughs> That's enough about lessons. Tell us something about games. Oh. <laughs> Same as if he had a bone in his throat, you know. <laughs> now, you may not have lived much under the sea. I haven't. And perhaps you were never introduced to a lobster. Oh, I once tasted... No, never. Ah. So you have no idea what a delightful thing a lobster quadrille is. No, indeed. What sort of a dance is it? Would you like to see a little of it? Very much indeed. Right. Uh, let's try the first figure. Uh, we can do it without the lobsters, you know. Now, which shall, shall sing? Oh, oh, you sing. <laughs> I've forgotten the words. Will you walk a little faster, said a whiting to a snail. There's a porpoise close behind us, and he's treading on my tail. See how eagerly the lobsters and the turtles all advance. They are waiting on the shingle. Will you come and join the dance? Will you, won't you? Will you, won't you? Won't you join? the dance will you won't you will you won't you won't you join the dance you can really have no notion how delightful it will be when they take us up and throw us with the lobsters out to sea the further off from A England, the nearer it is to France. Then turn up pale, beloved snail, but come with me and join the dance. Will you, won't you? Will you, won't you? Will you join the dance? Will you, won't you? Will you, won't you? Won't you join? I do so like that curious song about the whiting. Oh, as to the whiting, they... You've seen them, of course. Yes, I've often seen them at Din... I don't know where Din may be, but if you've seen them so often, of course, you know what they're like. Do you know why it's called a whiting? I never thought about it. Why? It does the boots and shoes. Does the boots and shoes? Why? What are your shoes done with? They're done with blacking, I believe. Boots and shoes under the sea are done with whiting. Now you know. And what are they made of? Soles and eels, of course. Any shrimp could have told you that. If I'd been the whiting in the song, I would have said to the porpoise, 
Keep back, please. We don't want you with us. Oh, they were obliged to have him. No wise fish would go anywhere without a porpoise. Wouldn't you, Jamie? Oh, of course not. Why, if a fish came up to me and told me he was going on a journey, I'd say to him, with what porpoise? Don't you mean purpose? I mean what I say. Shall we try another figure of the lobster quadrille? Or would you like the mock turtle to sing a song? Oh, a song, please. If the mock turtle would be so kind. Hmm. No accounting for taste. Singer, uh, turtle soup, will you, old fellow? Beautiful soup, so rich and green, waiting in a hot terrain. Who for such days is would not stoop? Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Soup. Who cares for fish, game, or any other dish? Who would not give all else for two? Any worth only a beautiful soup. Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Soup of the beginning. The trial's beginning. The trial is beginning. Come on. What trial is it? Come on. That's the judge because of his great wig. And that's the jury box. And I suppose those creatures are the jurors. What are they doing? They can't have anything to put down yet before the trial's begun. They're putting their names down for fear they should forget them before the end of the trial. <laughs> Stupid thing. Silence in the court. Young lady, look along the road and tell me, whom do you see? I see nobody on the road. I only wish I had such eyes. To see nobody at such a distance, too. It's enough for me to see real people by this light. I see somebody now, but he's coming very slowly. And what curious attitudes he goes into. Not at all. He's an Anglo-Saxon messenger. And those are Anglo-Saxon attitudes. He only does them when he's happy. His name is Hare. I love my love with an H because he is happy. I hate him with nature because he is hideous. I fed him with ham sandwiches and hay. His name is Hare, and he lives... He lives on the hill. The other messenger's called Hatter. I must have two, you know, to come and go. One to come and one to go. I beg your pardon? It isn't respectable to beg. This young lady loves you with an H. It, you alarm me. I feel faint. Give me a ham sandwich. <laughs> and 
another sandwich. There's only hay left now. Uh, hay, then. Oh, there's nothing like eating hay when you're faint. I should think throwing cold water over you would be better. I didn't say it was nothing better. I said it was nothing like it. Who did you pass on the road? Nobody. Quite right, quite right. She saw him, too. So nobody walks slower than you. Well, now that you've got your breath, tell us what are they saying in town? I'll whisper it. The trial ought to begin! You call that a whisper? You do that again, I'll have you butted! Went through and through my head, like an earthquake. Sit down! Herald, read the accusation. The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole those tarts and took them quite away. Consider your verdict. Uh, not yet, Your Majesty. Uh, th there's a lot to come before that. Call the first witness. I beg pardon, Majesty, for bringing this in, but <clears throat> I hadn't quite finished my tea when I was sent for. Well, you ought to have finished. When did you begin? 14th of March, uh, I think it was. The 15th! 16th! Oh. Write that down! Yes, yes. Uh, remove your hat. It isn't mine, huh? Stolen! I keep them to sell. I'm none of my own. I'm a hatter. Just get on with it. And don't be nervous or I'll have you executed on the spot. Give me a list of the singers at the last concert. Give your evidence or I'll have you executed, whether you're nervous or not. Yeah. Um, a poor man, the Majesty. Um, I hadn't but just begun my tea, not above a week or so ago. And what with the bread and the butter that he soaked in, and the twinkling of the tea. The twinkling of a what? It began with the tea. Well, of course, twinkling begins with the tea. Did you think I'm some sort of dunce? Well, if that's all you have to say, you may stand down. I can't go any lower. I'm on the floor as it is. Well, then you may sit down. I'd rather finish my tea. You may go. Just take his head off outside. Call the next witness. If, if, please, Majesty, uh, this piece of paper has just been picked up. If, if, it's a set of verses. Are they in the prisoner's handwriting? No, they're not. And that's the queerest part about it. Well, he must have imitated someone else's hand. Please, Your Majesty, I didn't write it. And they can't prove I did. There's no name signed at the end. Well, if you didn't sign it, that only makes matters worse. You must have meant some mischief, or you'd have signed your name like an honest man. <clears throat> Proves his guilt. It proves nothing of the sort. Why, you don't even know what the verses are about. Shh. Read them. If, where shall I begin, Your Majesty? Begin at the beginning and go on until you come to the end, then stop. <laughs> they told me you had been to her and mentioned me to him. She gave me a good character, but said I could not swim. He sent them word I had not gone. We know it to be true. If she should push the matter on, what would become of you?
I gave her one, they gave him two, you gave us three or more. They all returned from him to you, though they were mine before. I gave her one, they gave him two, you gave us three or four. They all returned from him to you, though they were mine before. If I or she should chance to be involved in this affair, he trusts to you to set them free exactly as we were. He, he trusts trust to you to set them free exactly as we were. My notion was that you had been before she had this fit An obstacle that came between him and ourselves and it Before she had this fit, before she had this fit Don't let him know she liked them best for this must ever be A secret kept from all the rest between yourself and me she liked them best for this must ever be a secret kept from all the rest between yourself and me for this must ever be for this must ever be a secret kept from all the rest between yourself and me a secret kept from all the rest between yourself and me a secret kept from all the rest a secret kept from all the rest a secret kept from all the rest from all The jury. If any of them can explain it, I'll give him sixpence. I don't believe there's an atom of meaning in it. She doesn't believe there's an atom of meaning in it. Well, if there's no meaning in it, that saves a world of trouble, as we didn't try to find any. And yet I don't know. I seem to see some meaning in them, after all. Said I could not swim. You can't swim, can you? Do I look like... All right, so far... We know it to be true. Oh, that's the jury, of course. I gave her one, they gave him two. Why, that must be what he did with the tarts, you know. But it goes on. They all returned from him to you. Why, there they are. Nothing could be clearer than that. Then again, before she had this fit. You never had fits, my dear, I think. Never. Then the words don't fit you. It's a pun. <laughs> what do you know about this business? Nothing. No, nothing whatever? Nothing whatever. But that's very important. Unimportant. 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 Uh, I meant, of course, unimportant. 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 Un 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 unimportant. Consider your verdict. No, no. No, no. Sentence first. Sentence first. Verdict. Verdict. Afterwards. Afterwards. Stuff and nonsense. The idea of having the sentence first. Hold your tongue. I won't. <gasps> Off with her head. Off with her head? Off with, with her head. Off 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 with her head. going and where do you come from look up speak nicely and don't twiddle your fingers you see I've lost my way I don't know what you mean by your way all the ways about here belong to me but why did you come here at all <clears throat> curtsy while you're thinking what to answer it saves time I'll try it when I go home the next time I'm a little late for dinner it's time for you to answer now. Open your mouth a little wider when you speak and always say, Your Majesty. I only wanted to see what the garden was like, Your Majesty. And that's right. But when you say gardens, I've seen gardens compared with which this would be a wilderness. And I thought I'd try and find my way to the top of that hill. 
When you say hill, I could show you hills compared with which you'd call that a valley. No, I shouldn't, you know. A hill can't be a valley. That would be nonsense. You may call it nonsense if you like, but I've heard nonsense compared with which that would be as sensible as a dictionary. Oh, I declare. It's marked out like a large chessboard. It's a great, huge game of chess that's being played all over the world. If this is the world at all, you know, oh, what fun it is. How oh, I wish I were a part of it. I wouldn't mind being a pawn, if only I might join. Though, of course, I should like to be a queen best. <laughs> that's easily managed, you know. You can be the white queen's pawn, if you like. Yes, Lily's too young to play. You'll be in the second square to begin with. And when you get to the eighth square, you'll be a queen. Faster, faster! I wonder if all the things move along with us. Faster, don't try to talk! Are we nearly there? We're nearly there! Why, we passed it ten minutes ago! Rest for a little if you'd like. Why, I do believe we've been under this tree the whole time. Everything's just as it was. Of course it is. What would you have it? Well, in our country, you'll generally get somewhere else. If you had run very fast for a long time as we've been doing. A slow sort of country. Now here, you see, it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. And if you want to get somewhere else, you must run at least twice as fast as that. Oh, I'd rather not try, please. I'm quite content to stay here. Only, I am so hot and thirsty. Oh, Ooh. I know what you want. Have a biscuit? While you are refreshing yourself, I'll just take the measurements. I shall give you your directions. Have another biscuit? Oh, no, thank you. One's quite enough. Thirst quenched, I hope. At the end of three yards, I shall repeat them for fear of your forgetting them. At the end of four, I shall say goodbye. And at the end of five, I shall go. The pawn goes two squares in its first move, you know. So you'll go very quickly through the third square. Uh, by railway, I should think. And you'll find yourself in the fourth square in no time. Well, that square belongs to Tweedledum and Tweedledee. The fifth square is mostly water. The sixth square belongs to uh, Humpty Dumpty. But you make no remark. Oh, I didn't know I had to make one just then. You could have said it is very kind of you to tell me all of these things. However, we will suppose that it has been said. The seventh square is all forest. However, one of the knights will show you the way. And when you reach the eighth square, we shall be queens together. And it is all feasting and fun and ha, ha, ha. Speak French when you can't think of the English for it. Turn your toes out when you walk. And remember who you are. Goodbye. She can run very fast. Tickets, please. <laughs> Show your ticket, child. Don't, Don't keep, keep him waiting, child. Why is time is worth a thousand pounds a minute? I'm afraid I haven't got one. There wasn't a ticket office where I came from. There wasn't room for one where she came from. The land is worth a thousand pounds a minute. Don't make excuses. You should have brought one from the engine driver. The man that drives the engine. Why, the smoke alone is worth a thousand pounds a puff. Oh, there's no use in speaking then. Better say nothing at all. Language is worth a thousand pounds a word. I shall dream about a thousand pounds tonight. I know I shall. You're travelling the wrong way. So a younger child ought to know which way she's going, even if she doesn't know her own name. 
She ought to know her way to the ticket office, even if she doesn't know her alphabet. She'll have to go back from here this luggage. Jerry, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> It's only a brook we have to jump over. Oh. <laughs> Still, it will take us into the fourth square. That's some comfort. I suppose they've each got tweed around the back of the collar. If you think we're waxworks, you ought to pay, you know. Waxworks are not made for looking at for nothing, no how. Contrarywise, if you think we're alive, you ought to speak. I'm sure, I'm very sorry. I know what you're thinking, and it isn't so, no how. Contrarywise, if it was so, it might be. If it were so, it would be. But as it isn't, it ain't. That's the logic. <laughs> Well, I was thinking, which is the best way out of this wood, for it's coming on very dark. Would you tell me, please? <laughs> First boy. No, how? Next boy. Continue, wise. Would you tell me, please? Do you like poetry? Yes, pretty well, some poetry. What shall we repeat to her? Oh, the walrus and the carpenter. That's longest. Oh, it's very long. Would you tell me the sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. He did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright. And this was odd because it was the middle of the night. The walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. They wept like anything to see such quantities of sand. If this were only cleared away, they said it would be grand. Oysters come and walk with us, the walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. We cannot do with more than four to give a hand to each. The eldest oyster looked at him, but never a word he said. The eldest oyster winked his eye and shook his heavy head. Meaning to say he did not choose to leave his oyster bed. But four young oysters hurried up, all eager for the treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd because, you know, they, they hadn't any feet. For other oysters followed them, and yet another four. And thick and fast they came at last, and more and more and more. All hopping through the frothy waves. And scrambling to the shore, the walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so, and then they rested on a rock conveniently low, and all the little oysters stood and waited in a row. Time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and sheets and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot and where the pigs have wings. A loaf of bread, the walrus said, is what we chiefly need. Pepper and vinegar, besides, are very good indeed. Now, if you're ready, oysters, dear, we can begin to feed. But not on us, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be a dismal thing to do. 
the night is fine, the walrus said, do you admire the view? It seems a shame, the walrus said, to play them such a trick. After we brought them out so far and made them trot so quick. The carpenter said nothing but the butter spread to thick. Yeah. For you, the walrus said, I deeply sympathize. With sobs and tears, he sorted out those of the largest size. Holding his pocket handkerchief before his streaming eyes. Oh, oyster said, the carpenter, you've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But, but answer came there none. But answer came there none. And this was scarcely on me. They eat and Sorry for the poor oysters. He ate more than the carpenter, though. He held his handkerchief in front so the carpenter couldn't see how many he took. Contrary-wise. That was mean. Then I liked the carpenter best if he didn't eat as many as the walrus. But he ate as many as he could get. Then they were both very unpleasant characters. At any rate, I'd really better be getting out of this wood for it's coming on very dark. Do you think it's going to rain? No, I don't. Leastways, not under here, no how. But it may rain outside. It may if it chooses. We've no objection. Contrary-wise. <laughs> Somebody's shawl been blown off. I'm glad I happened to be in the way. Bread and butter, bread and butter, bread and butter. Am I addressing the White Queen? Well, yes. If you call that addressing, it's not my notion of the thing at all. If Your Majesty would only tell me how to begin, I'll do it as well as I can. But I don't want it done at all. I've been addressing myself for the last two hours. Dear me, every single thing's crooked. And she's all over pins. May I put your shawl straight for you? Oh, I don't know what's the matter with it. It's out of temper, I think. I've pinned it here and I've pinned it there. There's no pleasing it. Can't go straight, you know, if you pin it all one side. And dear me, what a state your hair is in. The brush got entangled in it. And I lost the comb yesterday. Come, you look rather better now. But really, you should have a lady's maid. Oh, I'm sure I'll take you with pleasure. Tuppence a week and jam every other day. I don't want you to hire me. And I don't care for jam. Well, it's very good jam. Well, I don't want any today at any rate. Well, you couldn't have it today if you did want it. The rule is jam tomorrow and jam yesterday. But never jam today. It must come sometimes to jam today. But it can't. It's jam every other day. And today isn't any other day, you know. I don't understand you. It's dreadfully confusing. Oh. That's the effect of living backwards, I guess. It always makes one a little giddy at first. Living backwards? I never heard of such a thing. There's one great advantage in it. That one's memory works both ways. I'm sure mine only works one way. I can't remember things before they happen. <laughs> it's a poor sort of memory that only works backwards. Well, what sort of things do you remember best? I remember things that happen the week after next. For instance, now, take the king's messenger. He's in prison being punished. And the trial doesn't even begin until Wednesday. And of course, the crime, well, that comes last of all. Suppose he never commits the crime. Well, that would be all the better, wouldn't it? Well, it would be all the better. But it wouldn't be all the better his being punished for it. Oh, you're wrong there at any rate. Were you ever punished? 
Only for fault. And you were all the better for it, I know. Oh, yes, but then I had done the things I was being punished for. That makes all the difference. Yes. But if you hadn't done them, that would be better still. Better and better and better and better and better. Oh, there's a mistake here somewhere. Oh! Oh, my finger's bleeding. Oh, oh, oh. What is the matter? Have you pricked your finger? Oh, I haven't pricked it yet, but I soon shall. Oh, oh, When do oh. you expect to do it? When I fasten my shawl again. The pin will come undone directly. Oh, oh, oh take oh. care. You're holding it all crooked. Oh. oh. That accounts for the bleeding, you see? Now you understand the way things happen here. Why don't you scream now? I've already done all the screaming. What would be the good of having it all over again? Well, I'm glad it's getting lighter. I thought it was the night coming on. <laughs> oh, I wish I could manage to be glad. I never can remember the rule. Oh, you must be happy here in this wood, being glad whenever you like. Only it's so very lonely here. Now, don't go on like that. Consider what a great girl you are. Consider what a long way you've come today. Consider what a clock it is. Consider anything, only don't cry. Can you keep from crying by considering things? That's the way it's done. Nobody can do two things at once. Now, let's consider your age to begin with. How old are you? I'm seven and a half, exactly. You don't have to say it exactly. I can believe it without that. Now, I'll give you something to believe. I am 101, five months and one day. I can't believe that. You can? No. Well, try again. Okay. Take a long breath and shut your eyes. <laughs> There's no use in trying. One can't believe in possible things. <laughs> oh, I dare say you haven't had much practice. When I was your age, I did it a half an hour every day. Sometimes I could believe as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Oh, there goes the shawl. Uh, I've got it. Now you shall see me pin it again, all by myself. And I hope your finger is better now. Much better. Much better. Better, 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 better. What do you want to buy? I don't quite know yet. I should like to look all round me first, if I might. You may look in front of you and on both sides if you like, but you can't look all round unless you've got eyes at the back of your head. <laughs> Things flow about so here. Are you a child or a teetotum? You make me giddy unless you stop turning round like that. Now, what do you want to buy? I should like to buy, buy an egg, please. How do you sell them? Five per farthing for one, tuppence for two. Then two are cheaper than one. But you must eat them both if you buy two. Oh, then I'll have one, please. You mightn't be at all nice, of course. You never put things into people's hands. That would never do. You'll have to get it for yourself. <laughs> seems to get further away the more I walk towards it. Well, this is the queerest shop I ever saw. It's Humpty Dumpty himself. And how exactly like an egg he is. It's very provoking to be called an egg. Very. I said you looked like an egg, sir. And some eggs are very pretty, you know. Some people have no more sense than a baby. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. That last line's much too long for the poetry. Don't stand chattering to yourself like that. But tell me your name and your business. My name is Alice. Oh, it's a stupid name enough. What does it mean? Must a name mean something? Well, of course it must. My name means the shape I am, and a good, handsome shape it is too. With a name like yours, you might be any shape, almost. Why do you sit out here all alone? Why? Because there's nobody with me. Did you think I didn't know the answer to that? Ask another. Don't you think you'd be safer on the ground? That wall is very narrow. What tremendously easy riddles you ask. Well, of course I don't think so. Why, if ever I did fall, which there's no chance of, but if I did fall, the king himself has promised to... <laughs> 
You may turn pale if you like. You didn't think I was going to say that, did you? No. <laughs> the king has promised with his very own mouth to... To, to send all of his horses and all of his men. I declare. That's too bad. You've been listening at doors and behind trees, or you couldn't have known it. I haven't, indeed. It's in a book. Oh, what a beautiful belt you've got on. Uh, at least, I should have said a beautiful corvette. Uh, no, a belt, I mean... Uh, Oh, I beg your pardon. Only I knew which was neck and which was waist. It is a most provoking thing when a person doesn't know a cravat from a belt. I know it's very ignorant of me. It's a cravat, child. And, uh, as you say, a very beautiful one. It was a present from the White King and Queen. Was it really? Yes, they gave it me. They gave it me, uh, for an unbirthday birthday present. I beg your pardon. I'm not offended. I mean, what is an unbirthday present? Present given when it isn't your birthday, of course. I like birthday presents best. You don't know what you're talking about. How many days are there in a year? 365. And how many birthdays have you? One. And if you take one from 365, what remains? 364, of course. I'd rather see that done on paper. That seems to be done right. You're holding it upside down. <laughs> to be sure I was. I thought it looked a little queer. As I say, that seems to be done right, though I haven't time to look it over thoroughly just now. And that shows there are 364 days to receive unbirthday presents and only one for birthday presents, you know. There's glory for you. I don't know what you mean by glory. Of course you don't. Till I tell you. I meant, there's a nice knockdown argument for you. But glory doesn't mean a nice knockdown argument. When I use a word, it means just what I choose it to mean. Neither more nor less. The question is whether you can make words mean so many different things. The question is, which is to be master, that's all. Impenetrability, that's what I say. You seem very clever at explaining words, sir. Perhaps you could tell me the meaning of the poem called Jabberwocky. As to poetry, you know, I can repeat poetry as well as other folk if it comes to that. Oh, it needn't come to that. The piece I'm about to repeat for you was written entirely for your amusement. Thank you. I sent a message to the fish. I told them this is what I wish. The little fish's answer was, we cannot do it, sir, because... I'm afraid I don't quite understand. It gets easier further on. Then someone came to me and said, the little fishes are in bed. I took a corkscrew from the shelf. I went to wake them up myself. And when I found the door was locked, I pushed and pulled and kicked and knocked. And when I found the door was shut, I tried to turn the handle but... Is that all? That's all. Goodbye. Of all the unsatisfactory, of all the unsatisfactory people I've ever met. Hoy, check! Hoy! Hoy, check! May I help you off with your helmet? Now one can breathe more easily. I wonder if you did. Ah, thank you. Thank you. I see you're admiring my little box. It's my own invention to keep clothes and sandwiches in. You see, I carry it upside down so that the, the rain can't get in. But the things can get out. You know, the lid's open. I did not know it. And all the things must have fallen out, and the box is no use without them. Ah. Can you guess why I did that? In hopes some bees may nest in it, and I should get the honey. But you've got a beehive or something like one. Fasten to the saddle. Yes, yes, and it's a very good beehive, one of the best kind. <laughs> but not a single bee has come near it yet. And this thing is a mousetrap. I suppose the mice keep the bees out. 
Or the bees keep the mice out. I don't know which. I was wondering what the mouse trap was for. It isn't very likely there would be any mice on the horse's back. Not very likely, perhaps. But you see, if they should come, I don't choose to have them running all about. You see, it's just as well to be provided for everything. That's the reason the horse has all those aglets round his feet. What are they for? To guard against the bites of sharks. It's uh, an invention of my own. And now, you must help me on. I must be on my way. I hope you got your hair well fastened on. Only in the usual way. Ah, that's hardly enough. You see, the wind is so very strong here. It's as strong as soup. Have you invented a plan for keeping the hair from being blown off? Not yet, but I have a plan for keeping hair from falling off. I should like to hear it very much. Well, first you get an upright stick. Then you make your hair creep up it like a fruit tree. You see, the reason things fall off is because they hang down. Things never fall upwards, you know. It's a little plan of my own invention. You may try it if you like. I can see you've not had much practice in riding. Oh, what makes you say that? Because people don't fall off quite so often when they've had much practice. Oh, I've had plenty of practice. Plenty of practice. The great art of riding is to keep your balance. It's too ridiculous. You ought to have a horse on wheels. That you ought. Does that kind go smoothly? <laughs> yes. I'll get one. One or two. Several. How can you go on talking head downwards? Oh, what does it matter where my body is? My mind keeps working all the same. <laughs> and here I must leave you. You look sad. Let me sing you a song to comfort you. Is it very long? It is long, but it's very, very beautiful. Everybody who's heard me sing it, either it brings tears to their eyes or else... Or else what? Or else it doesn't, you know. The song is called A Sitting on a Gate. And the tune is my own invention. I'll tell thee everything I can. There's little to relate. I saw an aged, aged man a sitting on a gate. He said, I look for butterflies that sleep among the wheat. I make them into mutton pies and sell them in the street. But I was thinking of a way to feed oneself on butter. And so go on from day to day, getting a little fatter. He said, I hunt for haddock's eyes among the heather bright. And work them into waistcoat buttons in the silent night. And that's the way he gave a wink by which I get my worth. And very gladly will I drink your honor's noble health. I thanked him much for telling me the way he got his wealth, but chiefly for his wish that he might drink my noble health. And now if ever by chance I put my fingers into glue, or madly squeeze a right hand foot into a left hand shoe, or if I drop upon my toe a very heavy weight, I weep, for it reminds me so of that old man I used to know, whose look was mild, whose speech was slow, whose hair was whiter than the snow, whose face was very like a crow, with eyes like cinders all aglow, who seemed distracted with his woe, who rocked his body to and fro, and muttered mumblingly and low, as if his mouth were full of dough, who snorted like a buffalo. At summer evening, long ago, a sitting on a gate. And now I must be going. But you'll stay and see me off. I, I shan't be long. You'll wait and wave your handkerchief when I get to that turn in the road. I think it would encourage me, you see. Of course I'll wait. Ah. And thank you for the song. I liked it very much. I hope so. But you didn't cry as much as I thought you would. 
I hope it encouraged him. And now, for the eighth square, and to be a queen! What is this on my head? And how can it have got there without my knowing it? Well, this is grand. I never expected I should be a queen so soon. And if I really am a queen, I shall be able to manage it quite well in time. Would you tell Speak me, Speak when spoken to. But if everybody obeyed that draw, And if you only spoke when you were spoken to... And the other person always waited for you to begin, nobody would ever say anything. So oh, ridiculous! Why, don't you see, child? What do you mean by if you really are a queen? What right have you to speak of yourself so? You cannot be a queen until you have passed the proper examination. And the sooner we begin it, the better. I only said if. She says she only said if. But she said a great deal more than that. Ever so much more than that. You did, you know. Always speak the truth. Think before you speak and write it down afterwards. Well, I'm sure I didn't mean. That's just what I complain of. You should have meant. What do you suppose is the use of a child without meaning? Even a joke should have some meaning. And a child is more important than a joke, I hope. You couldn't deny that even if you tried with both hands. I don't deny things with my hands. Nobody said you did. I said you couldn't if you tried. She's in that state of mind where she wants to deny something, only she cannot think what to deny. A nasty, vicious temper. I invite you to Alice's dinner party this afternoon. And I invite you. Well, I didn't know I was to have a party at all, but if there is to be one, I think I ought to invite the guests. We gave you the opportunity to do it, but I dare say you have not had many lessons in manners yet. Well, manners are not taught in lessons. Lessons teach you to do sums and things of that sort. Uh, can you do addition? Mm -hmm. What is one and 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 one? Oh, I don't know. I lost count. She can't do addition. Can you do subtraction? Take a bone from a dog, what remains? Well, the bone wouldn't remain, of course, if I took it. And the dog wouldn't remain. It would come to bite me, and I'm sure I shouldn't remain. Then you think nothing would remain? I think that's the answer. Wrong! As usual, the dog's temper would remain. I don't see how. Why, look here! The dog would lose its temper, wouldn't it? Perhaps it would. Then when the dog went away, its temper would remain. They might go different ways. What dreadful nonsense we are talking. She can't, can't do, do sums, sums a bit. bit. Can you do sums? I can do addition if you give me time. Mm -hmm. But I cannot do subtraction under any circumstances. Mm -hmm. Of course you know your ABCs. To be sure I do. So do I, dear. We'll do them together often. And I'll tell you a secret. I can read words of one letter. Isn't that grand? Oh, don't be discouraged. You'll come to it in time. Can you answer useful questions? How do you make bread? I know that. You take some flour. Where do you pick the flour? In the garden or in the hedges? Oh, it isn't picked at all. It's ground. How many acres of ground? You mustn't leave out so many things. Oh, oh fan her head. She's getting feverish with too much thinking. <sighs> ah. She's all right again now. You know languages. Yes. What is the French for fiddle dee dee? Fiddle dee dee is not English. Whoever said it was. Well, if you'll tell me what language fiddle dee dee is, I'll tell you the French for it. Queens never make bargains. I wish queens never asked questions. Don't let us quarrel. What is the cause of lightning? The cause of lightning? Is the thunder? Oh, no, no, I mean the other way! Oh, it's too late to correct it now. When you have said a thing, that fixes it, and you must take the consequences. Well, that reminds me. We had such a thunderstorm last Tuesday. The last set of Tuesdays, I mean. In our country, you only have one day at a time. Pooh. That's a poor, thin way of doing things. Now here, we mostly have days and nights, two and three at a time. Sometimes in the winter, we take as many as five nights together. For the warmth, you know. Are five nights warmer than one night, then? Five times as warm. 
Humpty Dumpty came to the door with a corkscrew in his hand. What did he want? He said he would come in because he was looking for a hippopotamus. Now, as it happened, there wasn't such a thing in the house that morning. Is there generally? Well, only on Thursdays. It was such a storm that I can't think. She never could, you know. Part of the roof came off, ever so much thunder got in, and it went rolling about the room in great lumps and knocking over the tables and things. Well, I was so frightened, I, I couldn't remember my own name. I never should try to remember my name in the middle of an accident. Your Majesty must forgive her. She means well. She can't help saying foolish things as a general rule. She really was never well brought up. But it's amazing how good-tempered she is. Mm. Pat her head. See how pleased she'll be. Oh, a little kindness and putting her hair in papers will do wonders for her. I'm so sleepy. Oh, poor thing. Smooth her hair. Lend her your nightcap and sing her a soothing lullaby. I haven't got a nightcap with me, and I don't know any lullabies. I must do it myself, then. hush a lady in Alice's lap Till the feast ready we've time for a nap When the feast's over we'll go to the ball Red Queen and White Queen and Alice and all Now you know the birds You just sing it to me I'm getting sleepy too <sighs> What am I to do? Do wake up, you heavy things. I don't think it ever happened before that anyone had to take care of two queens asleep at once. No, not in all the history of England. Oh, my pupils. Oh, my fur and whiskers. Oh, we shall be too late. Late for what? For the banquet. What banquet? In your banquet, of course. Come quick now. You missed the soup and fish. Put on the joint. You look a little shy. Let me introduce you to that leg of mutton. Mutton, Alice. Alice, mutton. The leg of mutton got up in the dish and made a little bow to Alice. And Alice returned the bow, not knowing whether to be frightened or amused. May I give you a slice? Certainly not. It isn't etiquette to cut anyone you've been introduced to. What impertinence. I wonder how you'd like it if I were to cut a slice out of you, you creature. Make a remark. It's ridiculous to leave all the conversation to the mutton. Remove the joint. And the waiters carried it off and brought a large plum pudding in its place. Oh, I won't be introduced to the pudding, please, or we shall have no dinner at all. May I give you some? Pudding, Alice, Alice, pudding, remove the pudding. And the waiters took it away so quickly that Alice couldn't return its bow. To Queen Alice's health. Queen to Alice's health. health. You ought to return thanks in a neat speech. We have to support you, you know. To the monkey that swirled, it was Alice that said, I'm a separate man, I'm a crown for my head. Let the loony mice creatures, whatever they be, come and dine with the red wing, the white wing, and me.
will carry the straw and his arm, and to see me a favor to him is a privilege high to have dinner and tea, along with the red queen, the white queen, and me. So fill up the glasses with treacle and ink, or anything else that is pleasant to drink. Mix sand with the cider and wool with the wine, and welcome Queen Alice with ninety times nine. She took her off the table as she spoke and shook her backwards and forwards with all her might. The Red Queen made no resistance whatever, only her face grew very small and her eyes got large and green and still as Alice went on shaking her she kept on growing shorter and fatter and softer and rounder. Alice sat up and rubbed her eyes. It really was a kitten after all. And there was Alice curled up in the big armchair. She looked round the familiar room and smiled to herself. Why, what a curious 